everyone is staying in and doing well. We welcome you to, for those of you who are at home, uh, live streaming, we welcome you to this worship service. Please know that we continue to pray for you. This week when I was doing my meditation, I came across uh, this quote that I'm going to read for you in just a minute, and it should be on the screen and you should see it. And if you want to read with me, feel free. Whenever you do not understand what's happening in your life, just close your eyes, take a deep breath, and say, God, I know it's your plan. Just help me through it. Just help us through this crisis, Lord. We have a call to worship this morning. And for those who are members of our church, if you want to uh, participate in this call to worship, feel free to do so. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. With the Lord on our side, what can we fear? What can trouble or viruses do? Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord is our strength and our might. The Lord has become our salvation. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest.
Good morning. Welcome again to our worship experience at Palm Coast United Methodist Church. Indeed, we are looking towards Jerusalem. As you have noticed with the backdrop as Linda was singing, that was a picture of the Holy City. And we celebrate at this time as it relates to Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. So let me share with you as it relates to encouraging you to continue to follow the CDC guidelines as it relates to our health and the health of others. It's very important for us to continue to be disciplined as we look forward to the day that we can all return together and share together in worship and praise God in spirit and in truth as the body of Jesus Christ. Of course, we're doing it this morning and thank you for tuning in. We're grateful that you're worshiping with us at Palm Coast United Methodist Church. And let me say again that it is very important for us to continue to do everything we can to continue to work towards helping sustain God's world and our health. We've been asked at this time to go ahead and just put on a mask, a facial mask, to protect us. Uh, but better yet, not just protect us. Because when we place this mask on our face, it is protecting those around us. So even if we're not concerned about the virus, be concerned about your neighbor, be concerned about your friend, be concerned about your church member, be concerned about your family. It's so very important. And when they wear the mask, it protects, guess who? You. Let us continue to do all we can to advance God's kingdom as we look forward to sharing let me also call your attention and ask you while you're in your homes to go ahead and get you your bread and also a juice. As it relates to us sharing together, we will have, as a body of God, an opportunity to have our first online communion worship experience. And so you have time now to do that and please continue to listen as I share additional ministry opportunities with you now. Let me encourage you to follow us throughout the week, Monday through Wednesday at noon. We are going to have three outstanding presenters uh, who will share with us a re reflection as it relates to uh, Holy Week. And as you well know, this is the triumphant week in the life of Jesus and all believers as we move towards Holy Week and Easter Sunday. Then on Holy Thursday, we will have a worship experience and we have a preach word. We have an opportunity for you to get a bowl and, and be able to just wash your hands as our commemoration of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. Let me also share with you that that will be at 6 p.m. And we will also have a concert, yes, a recorded concert of our chancel choir. Their concert from 2018 at 6 p.m. Then on Sunday morning, we will have our Sunrise Easter experience tune in at 7 a.m. And then at 10 a.m., we will have our Easter worship experience. Please continue to look at our church website as well as our Wednesday Word and our Friday Word. Let me also share with you, as it relates to our church, and our church's response as the body of Christ to COVID-19. It's very important for us to continue to be disciplined and to share and give our response. April the 13th through the 20th, we will have a campus-wide closing. April 13th through the 20th. If it's necessary for us to continue to extend that, we will do that with no reservation. We are concerned about your health, and may God continue to keep you and continue to pray for those who have now gone on and outrun us to our Father's house and their family members and friends. In addition to the first responders, let's keep them in our prayers as well. Let me share with you that I'm so excited about this opportunity to preach, but also I'm so excited about what has occurred in our community and across the nation as it relates to virtual learning. How indeed we have parents and grandparents uh, who continues to make a difference in sub as substitute teachers at this time. 
It's a great experience to see teachers, educators who have come out and gotten into their cars, have signs, and they have a parade as they go around the neighborhood encouraging kids to continue to learn, continue to grow, continue to develop. That's what's so important at this critical time in which we live. You're also going to see, as Lane has asked, several of our families, and we have an opportunity to continue to do that uh, during the course of this week as well, uh, for our kids, our children, to just uh, trace their hand and present to us as it relates to uh, them participating in worship in this time together. And you're going to see some of those hands uh, on the screen during the sermon time, but it reminds me of how indeed it's so important for us to continue to help them during this critical stage in their lives as well and to continue to nourish them in the Word of God and continue to have some fun. In a moment, we're going to see a very fun video with a grandfather and a granddaughter, and they live across the street from each other. We're going to see the way that they were able to have what we call now, and we're learning to do better, social distancing. In fact, on yesterday at 4 p.m., the clergy here in the Palm Coast community was invited to a phone conference call with our sheriff, and I thank God that the sheriff is very proactive in this. Of course, he's a faithful United Methodist. And it was a great time for us as pastors to get together and not only listen to the sheriff, but also pray for the sheriff and his officers and all of those who continue to be in arms way, making a difference in the lives of others. It also reminded me of a little boy who was in Sunday school along with his peers, and the Sunday school teacher said, hey, how many of you want to go to heaven? Just raise your hands. Everybody raised their hand except this little boy. Whole class looked at this little boy. The teacher zoomed in on this boy and said, Johnny, you don't want to go to heaven? Johnny looked at her. He was puzzled. He said, yes, I want to go to heaven, but I thought you were getting a group ready now. <laughs> well, I want all of you to go to heaven, but I don't want you to Hurry up and go to heaven because you don't protect your face, you don't protect your hands. We have been called to do what God wants us to do at this particular time as it relates to social discipline and distance. Let's watch this video. Grandpa and his granddaughter from a little friendly competition. Check out six year old Kira Neely and her 81 year old Papa Marvin Neely's dance moves. Since the pandemic, Kira hasn't been in school since March 12th or seen much of her grandparents, even though they're neighbors. To overcome the isolation, Kira's mom Sherry says the two started having daily dance offs. She posted this video on Facebook, and since then, it's been shared more than 12,000 times. Sherry says she's never seen her dad dance, but says he's really putting forth great effort. We think so, too. Katie Johnston for CBS Local News.
God. Prayer is much needed now in this diff during these difficult times. And some people are saying, I'm just locked up, can't go outside, can't do anything during this season of the virus. But I want to encourage you to spend some time with the Lord, you and your family, reading the Bible. You can even go online and get some studies. And I tell you, I have been doing quite a bit of that, especially this past week. And I feel stronger and more convinced than ever that yes, God is in control. And that God knows all about what we're going through. I'm going to ask that you just take a moment and go to God in your own way. Let God know what's on your heart. Oh, he knew what was coming. 
and he prayed to you. Ah, uh, praying, say, Lord, let this pass. Let this bitter cup pass. Pass. But then he said, let your will be done. And so today we say, Lord, let your will be done. And it's in your son Jesus Christ's name that we pray. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. Let us prepare our hearts at this time as we share our offering with God. You're invited to share as it relates to online giving. In addition to that, you can also mail your check to the church this week. And we have other ways to give as well as it relates to PayPal. For those of us who are here, we'll be worshiping with you now through our tithes and offerings. God wants us to continue to be people who demonstrate our generosity and our commitment as it relates to our faith and giving us part of worship. Let me also share with you that you'll have the opportunity to submit, like we did last week, uh, for our cross. Uh, just one word or two words and what we're going to do, we're going to share those next Sunday. Uh, so you just send them in throughout the course of the week and we're going to place them on the cross and we're going to also have a chance to continue to pray for your concerns uh, today as well as throughout the week. Our prayer ministry here at our church continues for me personally to be the beacon of light and sustain us during this crisis and for days to come. Let us give and then we will sing all things come on thee, O Lord. Amen.
We truly thank God for the calling upon their lives and responding to the call last week for them to come to share and to sing. And we thank God for their talents. It is great for us to give an opportunity for our young adults to come and share their gifts and talents in ministry. Jordan and Will are both products of this church. And of course, they not only were in Sunday school and church, but also in our Christian school. And so I thank God for their lives and their faith, commitment, and their maturity in growing in the faith. Let us pray. Gracious Holy One, truly we trust in you. We thank you for this awesome week, an opportunity for us to start and launch out into Holy Week. We thank you for the Lenten season and this opportunity for us to come and know this is the most intense week in Jesus' life and our lives as well. Speak to our hearts by your Holy Spirit. Let your people look beyond me and see you. Speak to us, Lord, for your people need a word of encouragement, a word of comfort. In Jesus' name. Well, I'm going to call your attention to our scriptorial passage this morning, but I also want to share with you, and I know many of you are Bible students, you remember during the course of this week in our Wednesday Word, one of our Bible trivia questions was number seven. What are the four Gospels that give the citation of Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem? I'm going to give you a moment to think about that. In fact, I'm going to encourage you to go ahead, share that with your neighbor. I know you know the answer. You're right there in your living room or your dining room or wherever you are. Go ahead. You know that answer. You're a good Bible student. Oh, you have it already, one of them, as it relates to what's on the screen from John's Gospel, the 12th chapter. All four Gospels share Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. In fact, the Bible uh, is so fascinating because it reveals to us over and over again concerning the life and ministry of Jesus. If you put together all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it is comprised of 68 chapters. However, when it comes to the life and ministry of Jesus, that Holy Week was so significant, so important. Out of the 68 chapters, 28, as a collective group, shares the final week of Jesus' life and ministry. Let me give them to you very quickly. Here they are. They're going to be on the screen as well. In Matthew's Gospel, the 21st chapter, and Mark's Gospel, the 11th chapter, and Luke, chapter 19. But also it's in John's Gospel that I want to call your attention to this morning. John chapter 12, verses 12 through 15. Listen as I read these words of scripture and also share with you the backdrop of Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. John gives us a description that Jesus is now on the Mount of Olives and he's looking over the city of Jerusalem, the holy city. And there Jesus is looking at the holy city and he's getting ready to make his descent. He's getting ready to make his descent down the Kendron Valley. He's getting ready to go down that valley. And here is now Jesus leaving the apex of the mountain, the Mount of Olives, and making his descent. And listen to these words as John gives us this description. Verse 12. The next day when the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took palm branches and went out to meet him. They kept shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus is found on a young donkey, and he sat on it, just as it is written in Zechariah, the ninth chapter, and the ninth verse. Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming. He's sitting on a donkey coat. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I want to share with you, as it relates to the title 
of my sermon for this morning, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Look to your neighbor and say the title with me, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. I also want you to look at the palm fronds there on the screen as some of our children made those uh, palm fronds and going to have a chance this week as well and we're going to use them next week during my Easter sermon. But it also reminds us as it relates to children making a significant impact upon the life and ministry of Jesus. Not only that, but keep in mind that we're all God's children and our Heavenly Father is with us even now. As we embarked upon Holy Week, let me share with you that indeed the Bible shares with us in 28 chapters, if you place them all together in all four Gospels, as it relates to the final week of Jesus' life. Indeed, we know uh, he made that triumphant entrance into Jerusalem on Sunday from the Mount of Olives. On Monday, the Bible tells us that Jesus, he went into the temple, and while in the temple, he cleaned out all the money changers. He overturned the tables, if you will. And then the Bible tells us on Tuesday, that same temple, Jesus goes back in that temple, and he's among the leaders of that day, the religious leaders of that day, the philosophers of that day, the great thinkers and theologians of that day. Jesus. He asked them a series of questions, and then to sum everything up, Jesus called them hypocrites. Now, that's not a way to influence people and meet friends, but that's what he called them. Well, on Wednesday, the Bible tells us that Jesus and the disciples, they rest. They had a period of rest. And then on Thursday, on Thursday, Jesus and the disciples were there. It was the feast of the Passover. Now, mind you, those biblical uh, students that we have in the audience and those of you who are at home, you remember, it was the feast of the Passover that called Jesus and his disciples and the people to come together. And they would have three significant feasts. They would have the feast of the Passover, the feast of Pentecost, and the feast of the Tabernacle. And large crowds would come together. Uh, you can say in our day and time, like the Super Bowl, if you will. And so here they are celebrating and observing the Passover. It is there that Jesus takes a meal, the Passover meal, and make another meal out of it. You know what it's called? Holy Communion. The Holy Eucharist experience was there. When his disciples were in the upper chamber, the Bible says he took bread. After giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body that is broken for you. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, drink ye all of this in remembrance of me. Well, indeed, we know that that Friday, they had a trial, not only a trial, but also keep in mind that they say, those same folks that said, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In other interpretations, and in other translations, it says, Hosanna, blessed, son of David, son of God. Well, on Friday, it wasn't Hosanna, it was a C word, crucified, crucified. Crucified. Jesus died on the cross. But that's not the end of the story. Hallelujah. We do know they buried Jesus and he was there in a borrowed tomb because he wasn't going to need it long. But early the third day morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And that same power will sustain us and keep us during this time in which we live. But look at the text. Look at John's gospel and how John gives us the description of Jesus coming down from the Mount of Olives, heading towards the Kindred Valley. And the crowd was already out there. And Jesus tells his disciples to go and get a coat that no one has ever been on. And if the owner asks you why, just 
just tell him the Lord has need of it. You read it in Matthew's Gospel, the 21st chapter. And Jesus decided to take a donkey to ride the backside of a donkey, not to come in like a mighty king, a warrior, coming on a stallion. Jesus is riding on the backside of a donkey as a symbol of humility. He's coming as a symbol of peace. Oh yes, they would spread their palm branches as a symbol of victory and triumphant, but Jesus was coming on a coat as a symbol of peace and humility. I'm reminded of the lady, Cora Ten Boom. She was once asked, what is humility? She responded by sharing her response in this story. It is the story of our text. She said, can you imagine with all of the people, all of the multitude that was around? The multitude had palm branches and they were saying Hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord and not once did the donkey say wow all that for me all that for me what she was saying is this don't never get it twisted it's not about me it's not about you it's about Jesus the donkey had it right. It's all about Jesus. The donkey never forced his way. The donkey never got out of his lane. The donkey was part indeed of the festivities, part of the parade, part of the celebration. But the donkey never got ahead of Jesus. I hope you meditate on that this week. I did. It's a clear reminder. Never get ahead Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Look at the crowd. In my own mind and eyes, and I can see the crowd as they were celebrating with their palm branches saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And this crowd had what I call, and you have them in your sermon notes, we sent it in the Friday Word, three expressions. Three expressions. Here's the first one. The three expressions of Palm Sunday. Number one, write it down. Live according to your call. Look at your neighbor and say, live according to your call. Oh, you can do better than that. I didn't hear you. Let me hear you say it again. Live according to your call. That's it. Look at Jesus. Jesus lived a life according to his call. At no time, not once did Jesus go ahead of his calling that was placed upon his life. He was sent by God. He was sent by God to be the Savior of the world. Even though people at times were trying to usher and push him to go ahead of his calling, he never would. Check it out in Scripture. If you look at the scriptures, the Bible says when Jesus would heal someone, when he would perform a miracle, he would tell his disciples or the persons that he healed, don't say anything. Hey, shh. Don't mention that I did. Never got ahead of himself. But oh, when it came time for Jesus to make his triumphant entrance into Jerusalem, when it came time for Jesus to demonstrate publicly, indeed, he was the son of God and the son of David. And the son of God means God our creator. The son of David is acknowledgement of David and how prophets have shared that he would come from the lineage of David. Jesus revealed himself on Palm Sunday. Jesus revealed himself to the crowd. This was a demonstration, a public demonstration that indeed I am the Messiah. Now the crowd would be concerned about this and they would, you know, they would get it partially right. And I'm going to show you that about that in a few moments. But Jesus Christ never got ahead of his calling, never allowed the expectations of people 
to pull him away from what God wanted him to do. Have you been there? Have there been expectations and anticipations of people trying to push you and usher you into things that you have no business being involved in? Jesus never got out of his lane. Here on Palm Sunday, Jesus Christ was willing to publicly, for the first time, demonstrate indeed he was the son of God, the son of David, and the son of humankind. Oh, you just look at the text very carefully. John gives us this description. John says, the next day when the large crowd that had come for the Passover heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took palm branches and went out to meet him. And they kept shouting. And how do we know that this crowd had great expectations of Jesus? It's in one word. One word. That word is what? Hosanna. Hosanna. Look at the text. It's right here in the text. It says, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. They had expectations. Here come our warrior. Here come our savior. Here come our king. Here come the one who's going to overthrow the Roman government and going to put us on top. They had expectations of Jesus. But Jesus stayed within his calling. If you look closely, that one word, Hosanna, it is a very important word. Now, nothing that would take place, Jesus was not aware of. Nothing that's going on in your life or my life or this country or this world doesn't surprise Jesus. Jesus heard the crowd saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I want you to look to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, what does Hosanna mean? Boy, I'm glad you asked. Hosanna means, Lord, save us. Lord, save us. Have you been there during the course of this week or the last few weeks as we deal with the virus? Hosanna. Lord, save us. And it only appears one time in Scripture. And let me help you out. I want to call your attention to Psalm, the 118th Psalm and the 25th verse. Now, if you look at the Bible and see how the Bible is put together and shared in scripture. And if you want to Google it, you're going to have various opinions as it relates to what is the middle passage of the Bible. What is the middle passage of the word of God contained in this Bible? It all depends upon the type of Bible that you have. Some of us have a King James translation. Some of us have a Good News translation. Some of us have the English Standard Version translation. And then some of us have the translations of what is called the lost books of the Bible. But I contend that the books are not lost. God put them all together. I don't need extra books. I'm trying to live according to 66 of them. Hello, you get that on the way home. <laughs> but let me call your attention to the 118th Psalm and the 8th verse. It has been known historically and biblically as the middle verse of the Bible. And listen to it well. The 8th verse. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humankind. Some translations it says humanity. But I want to call your attention to the one time that it only appears as it relates to the word Hosanna. And you'll be surprised if you look at the 118th Psalm, you're very familiar with the 118th Psalm and the 24th verse. I know those who worship here are very familiar because we have our congregational care pastor. She stands at the podium every Sunday morning and she stands at that podium and she shares these words without looking even at the scripture. It's in the 118th Psalm and the 24th verse. It says, this is the day the Lord has made and let us rejoice yes. and be glad in it. Amen. But oh, I want you to read a little further. I want you to read verse 25. In verse 25, you're going to see, indeed, the word Hosanna. 
That's our English translation, and the word holds there from Greek to Hebrew. It comes to us, and it reminds us of this word, Hoshana. Hoshana. Hoshana is the Hebrew word for Hosanna. It means, Lord, save us. A Lord, help us. And listen to the 25th verse. Lord, save us. Lord, please grant us success. That's a concern. But then if you read the 26th verse, you'll read these words as it relates to confidence. He who comes in the name of the Lord is what? Blessed. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. We bless you. Now keep in mind that when we say the word Hosanna, Hosanna is not a proper noun. It's not a pronoun. It's not a you. It's not even a praise. Oh, there are praise songs that says, Hosanna, I praise you. I worship you. But Hosanna is not a you. It's not a proper noun. It's not a pronoun. It's not a praise. Hosanna is a plea. It's a cry. It's a petition. It's sounding the alarm. Have you been there during the course of dealing with this virus? Crying out, Lord, save us. Save us. We're in a crucial time. Over a million plus have outrun us to our Father's house. We're in a crucial time where we need to continue to follow the guidelines of the CDC, to continue to make a difference difference as it relates to us socially distancing ourselves from each other, but yet not praying from each other, for each other. We can say, Hosanna, Lord save us, Lord help us, Lord heal us. It reminds me of a story of a man as I continue to haste along who really needed help. And let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a position where you needed help? Have you ever been in a position where you really needed help? That word help is a clear reminder. It's in the English dictionary. It is the ultimate admission that I can't help myself. I need to cry out to others. I need to cry out to another person. I need to cry out to God. Saying help is a sign of humility. It's a sign of humbling ourselves, letting go of our pride, our brokenness, and we seek to be healed. Let me share this story with you. This story is about a man who was walking along the edge of a cliff, and he fell over. And about a third of the way down the cliff, he reached out, and he grabbed a vine that was growing out of the side of the rock. And he was hanging there, dangling along almost to his death. And he began to cry out, help, help, help. And for the first time in his life, he cried out to the Lord, Lord, help me, save me. Well, all of a sudden, this man heard a voice. It was the voice from heaven. My son, I am saving you. I provide what you really needed the most. I provided right there on the edge of the cliff something for you to hold on to. I have you in the palm of my hands. I'm your God. Oh, I don't know about you, but for me, that speaks volume to my life and what we're experiencing now. If we cry out to the God, God, help me, save me, come and see about me. God is right there. He doesn't abandon us. He's a present help in the time of need. Hallelujah. And God will be right there when we need him the most. And when God helps us, we ought to do what? Help somebody else. 
How many of you remember the song, uh, and, and his days gone past, by Mahalia Jackson? She used to sing a song, if I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can help somebody with a word or song, then my living shall not what? Be in vain. When we receive help, we ought to be willing to help somebody else. Let me share this with you. And also, I'm going to place it in context of the characters. There's something about the church that I indeed love. Not only because of how God continues to make a difference in my own spiritual walk and journey, but what we witnessed a few moments ago, seeing Jordan and Will share in this moment of worship, reminds me of my own youthfulness, reminds me of my own faith journey. I never will forget, it was in 1983, and our church had an awesome Sunday school. And we had a youth group that had over every Sunday, over 30 years, high school students and college students who would come and share. And several of us went on to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and pastoring now. And one's a bishop. But I never will forget, as a way of showing our appreciation to the church, we asked the church, could we sing a song? There was three of us. One has already outrun us to our father's house. His name is the late Bobby Bradley. He was pastor at Mount Pleasant United Methodist Church in Gainesville. Many of you know Dr. Geraldine McCullough, and he followed her, which was an awesome task in itself. He went on to be with the Lord in 2007, but the other one is a very familiar name, Dr. Earl Johnson. And then the other one is yours truly. At that time, I was dating Linda Wilson. You know her now. After 34 years, going on 35, Linda Jane. And boy, to impress her, I said to her, Jordan, I said, hey, you know, not only do I preach, but also I sing, but I don't tell everybody. And I wanted her to come, and she came. And after I finished singing, she said, yeah, I'm glad you preach, and I'm glad you don't tell everybody, and I won't tell them either. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the story, and here's the song. It was a song that we shared, and the church never asked us to sing again. Praise God. <laughs> it was a song by Bill Withers. Bill passed this week, and Bill shared these words in April of 1972, and let me just recite a line, I won't sing it to you. Lean on me when you're not strong, I'll be your friend, I will help, there it goes, that H word, I will help you carry on, for it won't be long, till I'm going to need somebody to lean on. Please swallow your pride. If I have pains you need to borrow, for no one can feel those of your needs that you won't let it show. Boy, those are good words. Jesus Christ is our leaning post. We can lean on the everlasting arms of Jesus. Look at Jesus in the text as he makes his triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. As he comes from the Mount of Olives and he's heading now in the valley. And when he gets there, they have palm branches saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the son of David, the son of God, and the son of humankind. But Jesus never got thrown off by the crowd. He never allowed himself to get away from his calling. He never got caught up <laughs> with the applause of the crowd. Let me say to you, don't get caught up with the applause of the 
crowd. Don't worry about human praise. Let it all be for the glory of God and for Jesus. In fact, be like the donkey. Know that Palm Sunday and Holy Week and Easter is not about you. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. Because one day Jesus is coming back. He won't be riding a donkey. Oh, no, no, no. If you read Revelations, the 19th chapter and the 11th verse, he's not going to be riding a donkey. But he's going to be riding what? A horse, a stallion. Because he's coming back as the king of kings and the lord of lords. Hallelujah. He wasn't caught up with this. The applause of people. Because people are fickle. People will say Hosanna to you today, but wait to Friday. Crucify him. Cut him off, if you will. See, the applause of the crowd was not so much for Jesus coming in as King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They were looking for someone to overcome the oppression that they were experiencing. In fact, if you look at the word Hosanna, it says, Lord, save us. They were really crying out, Lord, save us from the Roman government. Save us from Pilate. Do something with power. But Jesus is not coming into Jerusalem to deal with the Roman government, but he was coming to deal with sin. Yes, I am. Not to deliver us from wrong, but to deliver us from sin. Don't never get it twisted. It's good to give encouragement. But if my old basketball coach used to say, never read your press, just keep moving forward. Get better and better and better. In this Christian day and walk in life with Jesus, get better and better and better each and every day. Look closely at the text. The text reminds us of the question of the crowd. And if you look as it relates to Matthew 21 or even in Mark 11 or even in Luke 19 and look at the words of the crowd. The crowd asked this question as I get ready to close. Who is Jesus? Why don't you do me a favor? We have a few moments. Look to your neighbor and say, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Yeah, who is Jesus? The multitude said, Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Uh, part of it is correct. The other part is not. Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Yes. Yes, he's from Nazareth. Yes, Nazareth is in Galilee. Yes, he is Jesus. Yes, he's from Nazareth. Nazareth is in Galilee. Third time of charm. Hope you get it. Jesus, yes, he's Jesus. Yes, he's from Nazareth. Yes, Nazareth is in Galilee. Hope you didn't miss it. They had part of it right. But they also had one part of it wrong. Because he's more than a prophet. Can I get a witness? He's more than a prophet. He's better than all of the prophets. You go starting with the major prophet Isaiah. All the way to the minor prophet Malachi. And Jesus is more than a prophet. Jesus Christ is our Savior. It is because of him that we live, we move, and we have our being. Jesus Christ woke us up this morning and started us on our way. A prophet can't do that, but Jesus can. Jesus Christ continues to be with us over and over again. I'm reminded during this time in which we have virtual learning. And now we have, and thank God, those helpers who come along and who makes a difference in the lives of our children. 
It's a great opportunity for parents and grandparents and brothers and sisters to get together around the old kitchen table or the dining room table and come together, solve math problems, solve all of the different problems that they are now presented by way of online learning. It reminds me as a little kid learning my ABCs. It reminds me of the answer to this question. He's more than a problem. Spiritually speaking, if you look at the ABCs, Jesus Christ is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, from A all the way to the last letter of the alphabet. You can count on Jesus. You get a pen and a piece of paper and let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. You look at the alphabet A, guess what? He is the Alpha. Jesus Christ is the Alpha and he's the author and finisher of our faith. You look at the next alphabet as what? B. No one said anything in the audience. We're live. You can go ahead and see your alphabets. B. Jesus continues to be what? The bread of life. C. Jesus is the cure for COVID-19. Jesus Christ is the deed. He is the door opener. He's opening the door for you and for me to accept him as Savior. What is the ne next alphabet? E. He is the eternal Father and everlasting God. F. He's the what? Faithful King. You can count on him. If you go to bed tonight, you can count on Jesus to watch over you all night long. If you wake up in the morning, you can count on Jesus to be with you. He'll be right there with you all through your journey. Just look at the alphabet. It reminds me that he is G. He is the great shepherd. H, he's our helper and our healer. Yes, I, he is the great I am. J, he's our joy. K, he's the king of kings. And oh, look at L. L, he is the life eternal God. M, he is our Messiah. N, the name that is above every name. O, guess what? He is the Omega. P, he is the Prince of Peace. Q, he is the quick coming King. R, he's our Redeemer. S, he's our Savior. T, he is the truth and the life. U, he is the one who gives us great unity. Yes, V, he is our victory over the grave. Hallelujah. And yes, W, he's our wonderful counselor. And don't forget the next alphabet. He continues to be the expecting Savior in the Old Testament, but he was exhorted in the New Testament. And yes, he indeed is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Z, he's our zealous king. He continues to make a difference in our life. Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna. Lord, come and save us. Lord, come and help us. Those are two H words. I have another H word, but I'm going to save it for next week. It's a word of praise. It reminds us that we can praise God from whom all blessings flow. But they said, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. In Jesus' name, hallelujah and amen. Let us prepare our hearts as we share together in the Holy Eucharist experience. And we're going to ask all of our communion helpers and our singers to come at this time as we share together. And so as they're coming, I'm going to ask you to prepare yourselves as Linda and Paige and Tawn, Glenn and Will, they're going to make a choir, but it's going to be a social distancing choir. We're going to sing the hymns that you have printed right there, right there before you, and so spread out where we can hear you real good. And we're going to share together, and feel free to use the choir off if you so desire as well, or behind me at a distance. And as we share together, I'm going to invite you 
in your home to prepare yourself to share as I have a prayer of consecration and then we shall remember the reenactment of Jesus with his disciples. Let us prepare our hearts. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we cry out, Hosanna. Lord, come and save us. Redeem us and protect us and help us. And Lord, as you are helping us, let us help someone else. Speak to our hearts and consecrate these elements that we have here on this table to my left. And those that are spread out across the tables as we worship you online and share in this Holy Eucharist experience to give thanks. We consecrate our lives and recommit our lives to you and ask that you continue to find a solution for this virus. Continue to minister to our hearts as we break bread and accept the cup. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says on the night in which he was betrayed. Likewise, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink ye all of this in remembrance of me. Our first hymn reminds us of that moment, but as we share, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Let us break bread together on our knees. Yeah. 
God bless you and keep you. Go forth, crying to the Lord, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. May God bless you and keep you until we meet again. Amen. Amen. Amen.